agree. Um, and at this point, we're going to shift back over. And uh, Luika has been fighting with this Duro for quite some time now. The the cage has come off, and you're able to run for your sword. Okay. And it doesn't take a roll. Like, you can just kind of jump over to the central ring. Sure. Uh, but I would like to do a thing, and this is purely flavor, and I'll flip a light side point if I need to, but in this center ring, I'd like to say that it's kind of got some... It's not like a straight flat... Oh, no, it's got like rock out croppings and stuff. stuff. It's kind of... It's built up cover. So so, so I would like to use this cover to uh, create a stealth advantage, and considering that I've fought in this pit before, um, could I even turn that into a streetwise check to know exactly the best path to say, get the drop on this Duro. So you haven't fought in this pit before. Okay. Um, you fought in this arena before, but every time they do zing a ring it's a different pit. Okay, that's fine. So it's just going to be a straight stealth check? Uh, yeah, so you're trying to hide right now, so it's going to be a stealth check against, not only do you have three other combatants that are kind of trying to watch your every move and all at different angles, but you also have a crowd who favors other fighters. Correct. So, uh, it's going to be a hard check already. One setback die for the crowd. And I'm going to flip a dark side point uh, to upgrade one of those purples to a red. Okay. Are you feeling lucky? We'll see. Uh, I am not particularly successful, and I have two threat. So another trap? No, because I'm not. No yeah, longer. Yeah, you moved. You moved into that. the amplifier. Yep. So I, I am not hidden. So that's fine. You're not hidden, and you got two threat, which means one of them is gonna see you, and you, uh, let's see, let's see if you feel anything. So I will say you definitely have cover. You're just not hidden. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the defensive quality from your sword because it's busted up. So, do you want to flip any points to well, upgrade this check? Would I be able to perceive this before it lands, or not really? Oh no, this is kind of a this is kind of a cinematic result of your threat because yeah. we're not in like real combat. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I will. I will not. I think I'm just going to keep it as is. Okay. Well, ooh, geez, Louise, it's a, it's no, it's a success. Okay, it, it still is a success. So you're going to take seven damage because uh, it's just a regular old blaster bolt. Um, the triumph is going to be... Uh, man, I'm going to do a crit. Okay. I like them crits. <laughs> so go ahead and roll roll your own crit dice. I'm going to make you hurt yourself. Okay. Does this have any vicious or anything like that? No vicious, no. Okay. And now I've got to find... My... 40. So you got a stinger. Go ahead and mark that on your uh, your sheet. And is it is it easy or average? Easy. Easy, okay. So it's an easy crit. So you uh, you're hit in the back with a blaster, um, and it's gonna it's gonna sting quite a bit, and it's gonna inhibit your ability to um, make your next roll, your next attack, or your next move, or whatever it is, uh, because you're still kind of reeling from being hit like that. Yeah. Um, outside of the arena, near the falls. Uh, which what did I name those again? <laughs> Near Aderna Falls, there is a gate to the Undercity, and near the gate, you hear a rumbling and a loud clang as several metal pods release from the side of the wall and begin falling and tumbling into the Undercity, and parts of the wall begin to crumble in. On the law enforcement scanners, a young human male and his partner, um, an older Twi'lek female, Neri Kaluve, um, you would call her Captain Kaluve or Detective Kaluve, either one of those two would be fine. Um, she is, of course, part of the kind of rescue squad. What did you call it? Basically, search and rescue. Yeah, make sure you get up to your mic a little bit. You know, the search and rescue. The search and Hello. rescue squad of the uh, Terizian police force. Um, 
So uh, you guys here on your your scanners that that's come up. Um, you are called to duty. You guys were already in the lower city, um, so you're the closest unit to being able to see what's going on at that. Um, so you move quickly over there, and inside the arena, you guys hear the rumbling um, initially, but it seems to go quiet pretty quickly for you. Uh, so Varho, right? What is your last name again? Dorkon. Varho Dorkon. So Varho, as you uh, approach this area um what kind of conversation are you having with your uh commanding detective your partner your teacher i'm just trying to ascertain you know what's what's happened exactly if you know where these came from with well well it seems like parts of the outer wall have fallen off leaving a collapsed bit up here in the lower city so we have to go and see if of course anybody is injured first mm -hmm. above and then yes we will have to traverse into the undercity okay let's go okay so uh we'll go ahead and kind of screen wipe to there's an alien bug looking over the edge of a gaping hole in the side of a wall K click just attempted to open the door of what seemed to be a cell in the side of this wall. Although there's no noted prison or guard houses or anything over in this area. Was that my computer? It just did that? It's mine. Okay. Um, you look over and you see the kind of refuse wastes and the slums of the Undercity and not too far off you can see the pristine oceans of Terrace. Um, but right now you're looking in horror as the closest thing that you've come to a contact in finding your brother and the other Verpine that you came to Terrace with falls seemingly to his death in the Undercity. Now, this wasn't another Verpine. This was somebody else who you heard might have some information oh, no. um, on where your siblings were or your hive mates or whoever it was that had come with you. And uh, they are now tumbling. You you can see the capsule that they were in tumbling down. And uh, you had thought maybe they were imprisoned. Um, this was more than likely a sleeping cell for them. This is like a bedroom. Um, and so you basically hit the emergency release for him to be able to kind of leave the area as quickly as he could by trying to open his cell. So you've got in your hand, like the broken, like lever, the data lock. Okay. Um, you, you had peeled it off the wall and started ripping at wires, trying to open the cell door. And the whole thing just, you heard the airlock and then, choom, and it began falling, but it hadn't been properly done. So as it fell, the cables that were attached to it began ripping off and they were attached to other Cells. Oh no, I may have really hurt them. <laughs> so several of these little capsules are falling and tumbling down to the Undercity. What you don't I know done? how many of them might be full or how many of them were vacant, but you know that there are a lot of them. Oh no. So what can I do? Is there any way that I can stop this? So you, as you look around, uh, nobody else is in this hallway with you. Uh, you didn't see anybody on your way in. You just knew this is where this guy was. You knew the number of the room that you needed to look for. And uh, as you look around and you start to kind of wander toward the door, um, the whole area around you begins to shake and rubble begins to fall. And the wall is crumbling around you. Go ahead and make me a survival check. Survival? Is that a thing in this game? Am I, <laughs> am I mixing so. up Star Wars and D&D? &D? Uh, I think so. Uh, there's survival in here. Yeah, It's no. a thing. Survival is coming. It is. Uh, yeah, so and, uh, survival, and it? it's going to be hard. So it'll be three purples. Oh, boy. Well. I wish you luck, sir. I know. I was hoping agility. We may have our uh, first wipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to get a wipe. Uh, well, <laughs> one threat. 
one threat, but you fail. Okay, I cool. Fail. So uh, as you're trying to scramble, you see this rubble begin to fall, and uh, your leg gets caught under a rock. It's not broken or anything like that. You're just stuck. Um, the rock almost kind of rolls and sticks you there. And because you're not familiar with this territory or with this kind of activity, um, you know, living in an asteroid field doesn't really build make for a lot of buildings that can collapse. They're either very the well built. or better than that. That's right, exactly. You've got better engineers than that. Um, so you get stuck, and then you see water beginning to trickle down toward you. And it starts to trickle faster and faster and faster. And about that time, you hear the beeping of the door behind you start to open. Uh, and it the, the airlock, shh, it opens up. And uh, through walks two uh, uniformed officers uh, wearing the Tarizian police garb. Uh, and one points over to you. Uh, and the younger of the two, the younger male, begins to walk toward you um, to see how they can help. And Varho, that's you. Um, help, I Great. seem to be stuck. Uh, hang on, I'm coming to you. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I don't know what happened, but this wall collapsed. It, it happens sometimes. It's old, old damage, most likely. Uh, you should look into that. People can be hurt. Are, are you hurt? Are you okay? Um, I think I'm okay, but I think other people may be hurt. Well, we'll, we'll get to them next. Let's get well, you out of here you first. If you can get me free, I will help. All right, cool. So um, you can go over there and okay. attempt an athletics check to get his leg freed. Sure. Um, from the rubble, uh, and that'll be an athletics check with help from him because he's, of course, going to help you push this thing off. So you'll get the. Uh, well, I would hope so. You'll get After the, all, I have uh, a twenty boost strength. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different game. Wrong game, sir. <laughs> Wrong game. All right. So what's and the we're difficulty all here? Jealous. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the difficulty. I, am too. I can't play um, him in other campaigns. The difficulty is going to be average to pull this rock. Okay. Off of so it. just two. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'll and say it's a little something? bit slippery, so I'm going to give you a setback as well because of that All water right. that's spewing out. Sure, that's fair. Can I tell if more parts of this... I'm just going to be scanning the area. Can I tell if more parts of this place are about to collapse? Or um, You see the pods... Well, not from where you are. I'll, I'll give you that description in a moment. Uh, one advantage. And a dark side point. <laughs> <laughs> not sure you want to spend Which, that one yet. Of course I do. One advantage. <laughs> would be a success. One, That's one, all I need is one success. One, one advantage. Okay, make sure one you talk, t t tell us yeah. what you got, Varho. I got a lot of nothing. Everything got, got to cancel out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I think you, you did get a dark side point. Do you want to spin that bad boy? He can't. He can't put, turn it into he a success. He can't turn it into a, uh, an overall. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah he's, he's leapt over with one failure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one failure, right. one advantage, and a dark side point. Why can't he use a point to make it a success? Isn't that... Well, you, you can, but I think is? they're saying even if you did that, it would cancel, be canceled by another because failure. Yeah, you, have, you have four failure and three yeah. uh, three success, so you are, you are still you would still wash. Does that mean I'm going to die? Which results fail. That means you die. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's been fun, guys. <laughs> I'm not doing so, so hot down in the pit either. I so. noticed... I do get an advantage. Percy is running Sorry, this I game, got this. isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'll cheat my way through the rest of this. Do I see anything that could be used as a lever? Uh, I mean, there's rebar and, like, um, well, the equivalent of rebar. Perhaps if you grab that metal bar over there and used it as a lever, it would increase your strength. Maybe. And if you put it right here under this, ro under this rubble it could possibly free my leg. You can try it, sure. All right, go for it, yeah. All right. I'll give you an extra boost for the uh, the new piece of equipment that you've picked up. All righty. Well, I got more advantage this advantage. time. <laughs> I was gonna say you got more advantage this time. Okay, so what? What is? How much advantage do you wind up with? Four. Wow. Yeah. Um, so. And a dark side point. <laughs> and one failure. So you don't succeed because you well didn't roll success, but I will let you use those four advantage to essentially get that effect of a triumph. So you won't get the success that a triumph has, but. Um, you can have like the narrative effect of a triumph occur, but I don't actually free him. 
No, you don't. You don't succeed at freeing him. But uh, mm. I'll let you sit on that and think about it because I am going to shift back over to the pit. Okay. All right. So hey. you're you're in the pit. You've got this thing. You've been shot in the back. So you guys heard this kind of rumbling right as you got shot, um, and you've got this this stinger um, that hit you in the back, essentially. Well, the blaster, but the stinger was the the crit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what do you do at this point? Uh. I am going to look for the shooter because right now the Duro is the least of my worries because if I took something that's a ranged attack and I don't have any range to counter it, I need to find a more defensible position. Yeah, so you know for sure it was the Zabrik because she was the only one with a ranged weapon in the arena. Um, And you know it was behind you. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to basically get to a better vantage point to maybe get the drop on her. Not stealth wise, but just trying to trying to get up on one of these rocks. Correct. All right, roll me an athletics check with uh, two purples. Yep. So your butt's probably really trying to get out of the amplifier right now. Yes. Cool. And do you have any stim packs? I do, but not on me because that's not allowed in this fight. Yeah, it is. I thought the I never told you anything that wasn't allowed in the fight. Okay. Yeah. Apologies. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking traditional. Yeah. No. Don't assume uh, anything. Okay. Well, you're, you're here to fight to the not to the grave because but, you guys have protections. But yeah. Yeah. No. You've got you've got whatever your whatever your pit boss gave to you to use is at your full disposal. A disruptor rifle. He <laughs> didn't. Unfortunately, um, he didn't no. give that to him to use. No. He asked for it, but there was just something about it. No. It so. could have. Collapsed a wall or something. Yeah, it, it could have. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> what it, a tragedy <laughs> that would be. <laughs> I feel very uh, bad. Then, about yeah, that. I will try to get to a defensible position and heal myself. Cool. Um, so you you head over and stim pack yourself. So that's five wounds that you'll receive. Um, back to your threshold, and uh, as you kind of duck behind a rock, you see uh, the Zabrak is essentially thrown sliding. Um, in front of you, and I'm assuming you got out of the amplifier. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, as best I could. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would have to get on the middle, um, the trap, yep. the trap wheel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could also get on the outer wheel, which is just ice. Um, but yeah, the trap wheel is the closest. It's the easiest for you to duck behind something. Um, so you get over there, and as you do, you see the Zabrik is thrown, flung over the ice. She slides on the ice and off the edge, and her name, it, you hear a ding, and her name disappears from the running. And at about that time, another kind of cage opens up near you, and you kind of look over and see um, the dark-skinned human with the, the hatchets, basically, the vibro hatchets. Um, a cage opens up in front of him, and you know this is supposed to be a Nexu cage. But out of it pops this insectoid creature that just begins skittering everywhere, terrified. Um, You can tell immediately this thing is not an animal. It's sentient, and it's scared out of its mind. And you hear on your comms, I don't know what that is. That's supposed to be my Nexu cage. And you know this to be Lugnug, your uh, combat, uh, what did I call him? You're basically your pit boss. Let's go with pit boss. Yeah, he's, he's my boss. Combat director. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so he says, I don't know where that thing came from, but that's supposed to be my Nexu. We'll find out what people did with Gregory afterwards. Right now, you need to save that thing from this pit. And right as he says that, an even louder shaking shakes the entire arena and the lights begin to flicker. Do, um, I, do I recognize what species this is, given... It's Verpine. It, it is Verpine? Yeah, it's Verpine. Okay. Um, I just l- wanted to confirm that. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, the lights begin to flicker, and uh, you hear him say, hang on just a second, don't swing anything, um, because you know that all the pit bosses work together, so everybody's being given the ceasefire right now while they figure out what's going on. Um, so the lights begin to flicker, and you're waiting there, and then <clears throat> Udell... Uh, your dealer, who uh, you swore up and down, nobody had any idea who they were, uh, grabs all the credits, the hollow uh, messenger that you had thrown in. He grabs everything and begins shoving it into a bag as the lights begin to flicker. And he says, all right, Odell, we've got to go. Come on, come on, come on. And the other two kind of look very, very pissed off. Well, I'm going to quickly get up and locate myself on the other side of uh, my dealer. <laughs> 
All right, and so uh, now it's safe to say this dealer is your friend Norris Hawken, um, who you have been helping to pay off a debt to a bunch of huts for quite some time now, um, and this is going to help that quite a bit. There's a good like three, four thousand credits on the table right now um, that has been shifting hands throughout the day. So he takes all of this. He leaves you about a hundred. Uh, says thanks for your time. This will pay us off real nice. But you've got to come with me now. And you guys had a hideout in the wall to the Undercity. Had, had a hideout? <laughs> you guys had a hideout in the wall. And so uh-huh. he's he, he sees these lights flickering. He has no idea what's going on. Um, so he's just kind of grabbing his stuff and saying, let's, let's go. Let's get out of here. It's time to go as quickly as we possibly can. Come on, my green-skinned friend. I'll look back at the table with the uh, pissed-off individuals and look at him and say, I don't know what he's talking about. He must be stealing stuff. I'm going to chase him. <laughs> Roll a coordination check against uh, their ranged light. <laughs> coordination check. Oh, boy, I'm and It's going to be one red, one purple. So real quick, just a bit of b- backdrop on, on uh, Lukia. Okay. Um, she will go over to the Verpine and try to at least offer some. Yeah, we'll get back to it. Yeah. All righty. Well, I definitely failed with an advantage. Okay, cool. So you you get hit uh, for just the base damage, just a five. And what is your advantage, sir? Uh, I think my advantage is going to be that I knock the table over on them as we're running. Nice. Kind of slowing them so down. So you, you, you stand up very quickly, not before they can shoot you in your left shoulder, and you flip the table so it provides enough cover for you guys to get away really quickly. Um, so go ahead and roll me a stealth check for that as well. You'll have the boost from Norris. Because he is he is quite capable of getting in and out of situations as quickly as possible. All right. And it's just going to be an average check. There's a crowd running. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of hubbub going on right now. I uh, looks like I succeed with a threat this time. Okay, One great. Success with a threat. Um, so they they spot you. Um, as you kind of, well, no, you succeeded at hiding from them. So, um, they don't spot you. <laughs> I think the threat in this particular case is yeah. probably that I am, uh, absolutely sweating bullets and, uh, yeah, um, when I, when I get it, when I get to go, when I get to try and run away, I think I'll take a setback on my next roll. Okay. Okay. Take a setback. Okay. I'll, I'll absolutely let you get closer to failing on your next roll. <laughs> well, it makes it more interesting. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I would not question that at all. Uh, so you're kind of slipping and tripping yourself as you uh, try to rush out of this area. Uh, great. So back to Luika, as you uh, you quickly and easily get to the Verpine and you calm him down, uh, sort of. So he's just kind of chittering and, and and can't really you can't make out what he's trying to say, um, other than uh, the the white ones. You kind of gather that whatever stuck him in here, most likely like a trooper of some kind. All right. So, um, I kind of pick up on that. Is is he chittering in native Ver- Verpinian, or is it it pretty much just he's so lost? It's just it's a jumble of Verpinian. He's trying to speak um, common. Common. He's trying to speak the language of the Twi'leks, which, as we all know from Star Wars Rebels, is French. <laughs> sure it's all french to me yeah that's how they talk yeah it's funny i mean we we, we. yeah we <laughs> we talk that way oh <laughs> double meanings uh, now, so yeah it's just kind of a jumble he's basically just shouting this stuff for anybody who can maybe hear him to hopefully well then would he be broadcasting it because i'm not necessarily be picking it up not necessarily okay Probably. Because he's very panicked. Does yeah. Verpine communicate with radio waves up to right. 100 miles? Right. Yeah. So, um, I guess, just real quick, um, I'm going to try to to uh, calm him down with either a... Hmm, uh, you could use, like, a charm for that. I'm not going to try to charm him. I'm not, I'm not trying to be... I would let you use cool. 
that's what I was thinking. I think it's just going to be a, a, a straight cool just to, you know, tell them that the ceasefire, you know, we're, we're in a ceasefire state that everything will be all right. Yeah. No one's going to hurt you. you. Um, like I've sheathed the sword already. Yeah, okay. Um, and so I'm going to do that. And then with the stinger, I still have to, because this is technically my next roll because I haven't rolled yet. Yeah. Um, am I still getting the two setbacks? Or is the stinger for physical checks? Uh, I would say the stinger would have been uh, now in like because we're in like a narrative situation. So you spent your next turn trying to heal up. Okay. So the stinger would have gone away. Just making sure I want to make sure you know keep keeping with. Yeah. Well, now don't erase it because it still is a crit on your crit table and will add to other crits in the future until you get it treated. Okay. It's just not inhibiting your ability okay. anymore. So. Cool. All right. So yeah, I'll. I'll uh, what's the difficulty on this cool check? Uh, he's pretty upset and isn't really speaking very coherently. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be two purple, and I'll give you one setback because you've got to figure out a way to get kind of through, through to, to him. him. Yeah, that works. I'm fine with that. Um, Me, even if you weren't. <laughs> with 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 the sheathing of the sword and the lights going out, I'm actually gonna go ahead and flip one. To, okay. To to change that. Okay, just cool, to, cool, cool, cool. Flipping see. a light side point. Yep. You guys, yeah, just make sure to say, like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. So, <clears throat> hopefully, maybe that might give me a better odds of something good happening. Cool, cool. Uh, a big fat load of nope. Yeah, big, big fat You're blank a lot, yellow die. A lot of nopes. Uh, yeah, that's. that's we have aptly named our podcast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> free, free thread is what I'm taking. Jason, I don't wow. know what the deal is, but. I, I brought the dice roller for you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so you take three threat, and you're still on the trap ring. Yep. Which is still going. Uh, yeah. So roll that beautiful D10, and let's see what happens. A big fat 10. Ooh. Oh, roll it two more times. Oh! A 7. We which know we that one. Yeah, cage, cage. And an 8. Cage. We know oh, what that one is, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does a bug look you've like slipped the into the same <laughs> zone that you were in yep and uh, in his panic and your failure to calm him down what is the definition of insanity <laughs> the bug backs up flips both switches simultaneously with his bug legs and a cage springs up around him and shoots him into the roof of it with the spring-loaded trap right after you told him nobody was gonna hurt him does it at least calm him down? <laughs> is he knocked out? It knocks him unconscious. <laughs> Good. <laughs> at least he's... And bug is a derogatory term. <laughs> at, at least he's... More... He's malleable at this yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he can, you can make him do what you want now. Yeah, it's, um, it's a Weekend at Bernie scenario. He yeah. has an endoskeleton. Um, and How to be fair, nobody else that? hurt him. <laughs> He hurt himself. Yeah, that is true. He did kind of hurt himself. Uh, but you hear over your uh, your comm now, you need to get to the hideout near the gate. Something's going on over there. I'll be over there very shortly. Yeah, yeah. So you, you immediately take off because you know, like, this is where – that hideout is where you put your gladiators. So um, the way kind of the – pit boss relationship works in Terrace is basically they have two levels. They have gladiators and champions. Champions live in apartments they're doted on by their pit bosses, their combat directors. And then gladiators are, they're not servants or slaves, but they don't have as nice of housing. They're not told as many of the secrets. They don't get access to the trainers that the champions get access to. Uh, that kind of thing. So basically, whatever's going on happened at least near the gladiator quarters. For your pit. Okay. So I will get over there, but I I, I did say um, Lugdug asked me to get this guy and take care of him, so I am actually going to make an athletics check. Well, he's, he, he basically tells you, like, we'll, we'll take him from here. Okay. Like, so, all of the pit bosses know this is not supposed to happen. That's supposed to be a Nexu. We don't know who put him there. Okay. So, um, so, so they basically called off the fight. They're clearing out the arena because of the safety issues, and they're going to figure out, like, how to transport this fur pine. Okay, so I don't need to worry about him. I can disregard yeah. him at this point. Yeah, you were you were told to go after a different task. Okay. Uh, need to roll anything? Can I go ahead and do all No, you're good. So you head out. You're heading toward... Um, can I at least roll a perception as I'm getting over there to see if, if I see something as I'm incoming? Because even though I'm coming in hot, I would want to take... So all you would see would be the kind of 
the beginning of the outer wall crumbling. Okay, and that's fine. You wouldn't really see anything else. That's cool. Um, so as you rush toward this area, everybody's kind of rushing toward this area at this.